I love the cookery of the beef. The puree of the sweet corn is delicious. The bone marrow is excellent and it, and it works very, very well. I got inspiration from this dish from pairing different flavours together, which I know go together. I'm hoping that it's something they haven't eaten before, really. So it's going to be quite interesting what they think about it. I'm going to do a pan fried fillet steak with a miso sweet corn and a bone marrow, like gremolata, using like coriander. This is the kind of food I want to do. It's like French English cuisine with an um, Asian twist on it. What is it you love that inspires you about East meets West? For me, I don't think it's been really been done. I haven't really seen it in England before. It's in a little bit of it, but I want to see how far I can push it. Have you tried it the other way around? Have you taken Asian dishes like pad thai and put a Cornish pasty in it or anything? No, like? it doesn't work. I'm afraid <laughs> that doesn't work. <laughs> Fillet of beef is a prime cut and needs special care because it's not surrounded in fat. This dish is about getting the balance right. The soy and the miso has got to work well. The coriander flavours can't be too strong. He's adapting this dish to, to suit his style of cooking, and I like that. I think this could work. Chefs, you have 30 minutes to go. Now I need to pull out all of the stops. I really need to kind of prove to them that the mistakes I made were just lack of knowledge rather than lack of cooking skills. Matt, tell me all about your signature dish. Uh, the dish is going to be baked halibut with scallops, poached in a tarragon butter, cider steamed mussels, pressed greens, and an old style coral sauce, some parmentier potatoes, and some samphire. Okay. And all of these different flavours and textures together all, all work? They work. You've got sweetness, you know, from the, from the cider, from the mussels. You get a tiny bit of bitterness come through from the coral sauce. I feel that I let myself down in the skills test. I was very, very nervous. Hopefully, I can go forward and put that behind me. Good luck. Thank Good you. Luck. Matt's got poached scallops in butter, uh, which is a nice idea. Brings out the best of a scallop. The sweetness will buttery at the same time. But if the butter gets too hot, it's going to be like rubber. Matt is finishing the fillet of halibut in the oven. Perfect way to cook it. It's a beautiful fish, but you don't want to overcook it. This dish is fairly complicated. I've got it down to pretty much on the hour. It's given me 15 minutes to plate it up. I love this dish because it shows Cornish produce and Italian techniques, and that's what I'm all about. Josh, tell me all about your signature dish. OK, so I'm doing a sous vide lamb rump. I'm serving that with ravioli filled with ricotta, pecorino and roast garlic, broad beans, asparagus and salsa verde. OK. And the pasta's made with burnt wheat, so that kind of gives a little subtle smokiness, hopefully. OK, interesting. Not had that before. <laughs> when you serve pasta in your restaurant, do you ever serve it with a piece of meat? Never. No, the Italians... I was cooking this dish for some Italians, actually, and they were saying, yeah, it's quite strange having ravioli and lamb, but I think it goes quite well. My family likes it. I'm looking forward to this. Thank you. Josh's pasta needs to be al dente, firm enough to hold the mix, but thin enough that it's just going to break away when you eat it. And now I'm really curious about this special Italian burnt flour. Are we going to be able to taste this? Because I really want to try it. Josh's rump of lamb is put into the sous vide machine. He's going to caramelise it in the pan as well, just to get some beautiful roasted flavour. I've never had rump of lamb with pasta parcels before. I'm not 100% sure whether this will work or not. You have 15 minutes left! This dish is one of those dishes that can go all wrong or go absolutely perfect. So I need to keep calm before I get too excited and too competitive. Alex, tell us about your dish. So I'm going to serve uh, pigeon and you know, pigeon and duck mousse inside a crispy cigar. Serve with celeriac hazelnut crumb and a medjool date sauce. Nice. Can you tell us where the inspiration of this dish has come from? So uh, I've always liked cooking uh, game birds and pigeons and them sort of things. I think we've got bold flavours going through. We've got a lot of textures as well. When it all comes together, I think it'd be a brilliant dish. So what are your ambitions? Uh, I'd love to be a head chef at a Michelin-style restaurant one day. It'd be amazing. That's a dream. Alex is cooking pigeon today and that beautiful pastry crisp filled with pigeon and duck mousse. Quite a skillful thing to get right. What a time to show it. 
There is a huge amount of risk here. It's about the cooking of the pigeon, making sure it's spot on. But Alex looks confident this is his style of cooking. You have got five minutes left. Sixty seconds. Josh, doesn't seem to be much on that plate, chef. Time's up. Stop. Well done, chefs. <laughs> Matt has served baked halibut, butter poached scallops, pressed greens, parmentier potatoes, cider steamed mussels, a squid ink tweel, and a sauce made from the coral of the scallops. The fish for me is overcooked for my liking. I love the parmentier potatoes, and I'd want more of the sauce because I'm not getting the depth of, of the coral, which is a real shame. It's nice, but I wanted to be completely blown away from, from your cooking today. Matt, you've got a lot of ingredients that should all come together, but they don't. An individual piece of fish with some spinach, some mussels, and scallop, and nothing binds this dish together. It could have worked, however, the lovely things that I tasted there, those mussels and that sauce, just aren't enough of them. Just didn't go the way that I thought it was going to go today, so I'm a little bit disappointed. Luke has served pan-fried fillet of beef, a coriander salsa, miso sweet corn, burnt baby corn, glazed bone marrow, crispy onion rings, and a miso and rice wine jus. Very, very interesting looking dish. I love the cookery of the beef. The puree of the sweet corn is delicious. The bone marrow is excellent, and it, and it works very, very well. But having said that, what's running through this dish that I don't like, there's a sweetness to it. And it sits within the sauce for me, and it doesn't complement the dish at all. I love the sweet corn. I love your sticky sauce. I love the way you cook the beef. I think it's great. The bone marrow just felt odd. Bone marrow is, is beef flavour pumped up, and although cooked well, it seemed really odd to get sweetness and then real beefiness. It was just unusual. I have enjoyed the flavours I have here. Coriander, the, the sweet corn, and the beef is cooked wonderfully. There's just too much miso everywhere on the plate that it's, it's so strong. So I think a little less of the miso, but otherwise, not a bad start, Luke. I think with the dish I did, it's quite challenging to suit everyone's palate. Hopefully I'll make more, you know, friends and enemies. <laughs>